Our next speaker is talking about how blogging kickstarted his career. Uh, Brian Krogs guy has come to us all the way from the United States. Our second uh, American speaker for the day. Um, interestingly enough, he graduated with an industrial engineering degree. That's pretty impressive. What What is industrial engineering, Nick? You see, it's when you take... Um, now pay attention because this, this is where... This I'm definitely yeah. paying attention. So, you, what you do is you go and you study um, a lot at, a, at, a, at, a, at an institution. But not as much as a, as a pretty hard degree. No, no, no. Not as much. Not and then what happens yeah. is when, when you... Now pay attention because this, this is the big part. You learn to um, industrially uh, engineer stuff. Terrible. What Terrible. I'm so sorry again, people. I'm really... I always you, see you online. You know nothing about industrial engineering. I know a little bit. Okay. I've seen often online they've got those pictures, like meme pictures, and it goes what you learn at industrial engineering, and there's like a trolley on the side with someone brying on it, <laughs> and then people like with their tie windscreen wipers with strings, and and it's like that's what you learn. So Brian course. is from the United States, and uh, he initially started blogging about WordPress to to learn more about it. It was a, a side hobby for him. Uh, he now runs a website called Post Status, or Post Status, I guess, sorry. You're probably used to hearing it sounded like that. Uh, which is a WordPress news and link curation site. Uh, P-O-S-T-S-T-A-T dot U-S. I think that's right. It's a dot U-S domain, which is quite cool. Um, like I said, he's talking about how blogging kick-started his career. Uh, please give a warm South African welcome to Brian Krogsgaard. should have for that industrial engineering degree. Uh, nonetheless, I think you nailed uh, you know, the meat of uh, what you do as an industrial engineer. You industrial, industrially engineer things. I think that's as good as any. Uh, I graduated from Auburn University in 2008, and actually the industrial engineer that uh, is our claim to fame at Auburn is Tim Cook, Apple CEO. So I can never meet those sort of expectations, of course. So. Uh, now that that's out of the way, I can only go up from here. Um, I'd like to just start by telling you all thank you. Uh, thank you for having me here in your uh, beautiful country. I took this picture the other night, so now you know when I finish my slides. Uh, and it has been a, uh, a wonderful experience being in Cape Town. Uh, extremely thankful to the organizers for inviting me and all of you uh, patiently waiting on your lunch uh, while I give this talk. Uh, so my name is Brian Krogsgaard. I'm a WordPress developer. Uh, I was not trained in that field. Um, also curious, how many of you who are here today were not formally trained uh, in the field that you're currently in? We have a lot in common. Uh, so I was just like you, and I had a hobby in college, um, but I used uh, blogging to actually kickstart my career to get into what I'm into today. Uh, so I want to talk through that and then I'd also like to give you some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. So what's a blog anyway? It sounds kind of like a silly question. I'm sure that a lot of your designers and developers uh, has raised your hands before. Uh, so hopefully you know this, but a blog could be many things. Uh, oftentimes as a developer and I ask the client, do you want a blog? And they say, no. Okay, well do you have news about your company? Yes. And then they say, and we want to put some videos on our website too. Uh, but now they have a blog, they just didn't know it. So sometimes people uh, try to assume that content that could go on a blog is simply text. Uh, but really, a blog is a way of displaying information, uh, anything that we want to share with our audience. Uh, so let's think of it in that context. Uh, so it's, like I said, simply just to put some form of content online. When I started with this, uh, I simply had ideas. I wanted to create websites, but uh, I also wanted to do it very cheaply. Uh, in other words, I wanted to do it for free. Um, and 
I started working on some of these websites, but one of the things that I realized was that I really enjoyed uh, the tools that I was using. So those ideas were not necessarily very good at the time. Uh, I was working through them, working through my passions when I was in high school, college, uh, dreaming up ways. I've always had this entrepreneurial spirit. And I made this discovery that I really, really enjoyed uh, WordPress. I discovered WordPress as I was attempting to uh, build a website. actually discovered a WordPress theme that was developed by a fellow Auburn graduate, and it made it an easy decision for what I was going to choose uh, and hack on. So that's what I did. And that was around 2008. Uh, of course, I was in school. I ended up uh, graduating uh, as an industrial engineer, thankfully. Uh, so I went on and I had a job. But this web thing still stuck out to me. Still had ideas. I moved uh, to Birmingham, Alabama, where, I'm, where I live. And uh, you know, I was, I was like, they really need a site that's more of like a, a local uh, culture site. So I was like, that sounds fun. So I bought a domain and I started playing with it. Um, but it wasn't a very sustainable idea. I was traveling about half my time and didn't really know much about Birmingham culture. Um, <laughs> so uh, once again, I, I, I went through the same, same form of uh, strategy. But what I was doing was I was playing with these ideas. I was hacking around with WordPress. Really loved the tools. And I really just started learning a lot. You know, that first time you change a background color on a website, uh, the first time that you realize that you can put latest posts in the sidebar, or uh, you can change the font on your website, um, those are exciting times. That's what uh, excites us about the web. We can customize the web to the form of content that we want to portray uh, to our readers. <laughs> so, uh, so I was I was learning from uh, other blogs, uh, other people that were sharing their content, and one of the amazing things about the WordPress community is that they're so accessible. I still remember one of the uh, most well-known WordPress developers responding to my random question I put in a forum one day in 2010, and that was very intoxicating to me, and. As I learn these things, uh, whether it's a, a little function in WordPress or you know how to do this or how to do that, I really wanted to share those back, uh, and I also wanted to share uh, some of what I learned. You've seen some of the speakers here today talk about plugins that they like because they're just paying that forward uh, to you. They want to share with you what their success has been, and I felt the same way. So I started just writing. Um, so instead of trying to build a website specific to a niche, I actually just started blogging. Blogged a little bit on my personal website, uh, blogged about things that interested me, and uh, eventually I actually wrote a blog, uh, wrote a few blog posts about WordPress, and with one of them, I, uh, sent, them to, I sent it to somebody that ran a WordPress news website. And I said, hey, I wrote this thing. I don't know if you care at all, uh, but they said, yeah, this is awesome, and they linked to it. And then another one, I, I wrote it, and then I said, uh, hey, I wrote this post. Uh, I, if you want to publish it maybe on your site, that'd be awesome. If not, I don't care, I'll just publish it on my site. I was still fulfilling that need to pay it forward. Um, and as I did this, I just really started to embed myself in that community. Um, it's really, really focused on the industry. I wanted to learn what people were doing, how they were doing it. Uh, and this person was obviously very excited that someone was writing free content <laughs> and willing to publish it anywhere. Um, but I was fulfilling a passion. I had a desire uh, to get into this community. I, I saw something special uh, about the industry. So I just embedded myself. I wrote, and I wrote about companies that were coming out with new products. Uh, I wrote about um, how to do something. I just continue to uh, be curious within uh, this craft. And I knew it was the career that I wanted. Uh, it wasn't baseball, like when I was a little kid, uh, but I had a similar level of passion. I was doing something with a great company, um, 
but doing something that was more traditional, and I knew that it wasn't where I wanted to be for the rest of my life. And when you think about how staggering it is that, uh, for me, I'm a 27-year-old, so at the time, uh, I mean, I had 50, 60 years left in my career, uh, when you think about it. So we all have decades left, uh, hopefully, um, to have a career and do something. So I wanted to do something that I was passionate about. So I just kept writing, and I started building little websites on the side. I uh, started building a website, websites for someone that was getting married, or for a friend that uh, you know just had some kind of niche little thing that they wanted to do. I just started helping them. I shared what I was learning. Um, and I wanted to get a job, and I ran across a tweet, actually, from a regional development firm in Alabama. And it said, we want a WordPress developer. And I said, well, I don't know if I'm that yet. Uh, but I sent them an email, and I said, hey, uh, I don't think I could not email you, because I didn't even really know that people were hiring WordPress developers uh, for client work. I wasn't fully aware of the consulting arm and how, um, how big WordPress was within ad agencies, development companies, uh, and whatnot. And I literally walked into that interview with uh, two or three websites, my personal blog, and the websites were just very, very small. Uh, and actually on the resume, I had links to blog posts that I'd written about WordPress. So I uh, didn't have that much to go on, but I brought a passion and I brought a curiosity. Uh, and I was able to show through some of these things that I wrote that I had an understanding of the framework and that I was uh, embedding myself into this community. And as I talk about some of these things, I'd like to, you to think about, say, if you're a uh, business owner or if you're in an alternate career, uh, or maybe you want to make a move, think about how this could apply to different industries. This isn't specific to the web development community. Um, you can utilize writing, you can utilize blogging to embed yourself, to become an authoritative figure uh, within a particular industry. So that was great. Got a job. Was, uh, building websites with WordPress is extremely exciting. I, I loved my job, but it didn't end there. So now I was using blogging in a different way. Not only did it help me get into this career, now I felt like what if I could uh, continue to use blogging to learn and help me excel at that career? So my coworkers would joke with me because I was super nerdy into the WordPress community, uh, and I was essentially our WordPress encyclopedia. So if there was a question about WordPress, I was the guy. And that's a great feeling to have, to be able to have authority with your coworkers about your industry. So I took it to a new level, and instead of blogging on other people's websites or just on my personal site, uh, I decided I wanted to start an industry website. So I started this blog called Post Status. And that blog has evolved over time. All I knew is I wanted to keep writing about WordPress. I was learning from it, I was benefiting from it. I literally transitioned from one career to the next, mostly from blogging and having a curious mind. So I started Post Status as a link curation blog. Um, and I just, kept wanting to write more. So it quickly evolved into original content plus link curation. Originally, there were some new sites that were doing things, and you know they do three paragraphs, a screenshot, and a link to some news. And I was like, well, there's a lot of news going on. I just want to link straight to it. But I really had more to say than that. Uh, so I started doing original and long form content again. Uh, and, and that was really exciting. And now, as the sites evolved, uh, my goal has altered to, I want to be a uh, authoritative figure within this community. And it sounds like a bold goal. I actually hate saying that. Uh, it sounds kind of ridiculous, but really I want to be an expert within my field and I want to utilize that in my career. So I run this, uh, I run this website now and I had an extreme privilege that I'm able to communicate 
with the people that make the products that I use. I'm able to communicate with other service providers. Uh, I'm able to communicate with the core WordPress team or people that are um, doing just incredible things with the platform. I wouldn't have these opportunities if I hadn't uh, freely given my time to write about the industry that I was in. It turned out that if I wrote a post about Woo Themes, or if I wrote a post about any other company, any other product, service, if I wrote a post about someone that wrote a great tutorial and I shared something, if I wrote a post about a simple function in WordPress that helps someone, people appreciated that. And they would give you feedback, and they would respond to you, and they'd want to connect with you. And I've been able to develop some incredible relationships within my industry that have then opened up opportunities that I never would have thought were there. However, that authority doesn't come overnight. Uh, I blogged for probably three years before I, two and a half years before I started this website. So I was blogging in other venues. Uh, now it's almost a year old and it's still growing. It's still maturing. There's still people in this room that don't know about it. And that upsets me. I want you all to know about my website if you work with WordPress. Unfortunately, you don't, so there's room for growth there. There's room for me to be able to get to know you, to get to know your story, what you're doing, and that excites me. But it's not simple. It takes time. This isn't my career. I don't want it to be my career. In fact, I think to be able to write within your industry, you can do it best when you're working in that industry. So I'm a consultant uh, in this industry. One of the things that I struggle with personally, struggle with it as I can contemplate this talk, uh, and I know other people do as well, uh, and it's uh, fighting imposter syndrome. And I'm giving a great example because I spelled imposter wrong on the slide. Uh, there's always somebody that knows more than you, but you always know more than someone else, and you can utilize that in a positive way to help them, to teach them, and help them learn. And they'll remember that, and they'll remember you. So when you're writing, when you're sharing uh, with a colleague, or if you're tutoring someone new to your company, uh, be generous with your efforts, but also be confident that you can teach other people, because there's always somebody that was where you were six months ago or a year ago. And just don't be uh, crippled by imposter syndrome. But writing is still hard. It's like exercise. As you do it, you get faster, you get stronger, and you get better. But that doesn't make it easy. Uh, I don't like to exercise. Uh, but with blogging, I'm driven by a passion for the industry that I'm in. So you may think, you know, it's all unicorns and rainbows now, and there's just millions of people visiting this website, but uh, there's not. So despite years of effort, uh, doing what I'm doing, extremely passionate uh, about my career, which I'm incredibly thankful for. Now I just want all your traffic. I want thousands of people a day to be able to read the things that I'm contributing. But they don't necessarily come. This is an industry website. Gaming, like uh, the previous speaker, huge, huge industry. I'm blogging to people that make websites for people that want websites. It's extremely meta, and maybe your industry is as well. So don't be discouraged if you're not getting 10,000 page views a day. Because it's not just about how much traffic you get, it's about what traffic you get. If the owners of uh, product companies within my space are reading my website, I'm thrilled. If core developers of WordPress are reading my website, I'm thrilled. Those are the type of visitors that we want to have a desire to read what we're doing and to think about what we're doing. So it gives me an opportunity. Uh, Matty was just talking about theme options and these debates. And I love to opine about these debates. And I'm extremely thankful that some of these same people, like Matty, will then read my opinions about that stuff. So it gives me the chance, a chance to have an impact. And that's very rewarding within my industry. One of the things when you do this is, like I said, it's not necessarily 100,000 people come to your website every day, 
but you do have some advocates. You have people that support you. You have people that really, really are willing to share your content, to um, be a part of your community, and we need to identify those advocates. One of the things that you can do on my website is submit a post that I'll then link off to something. If someone's uh, consistently submitting a post, or posts that aren't just their own, if someone's sharing my content in social mediums, I try to identify these people and I try to capture them and engage them and create relationships with them. And they remember that. And it allows me to continue to establish uh, that authority, even if it's one by one. An interesting thing when writing is that accuracy trumps almost everything. I write about quasi-news, quasi-tutorials, quasi-just link to stuff. But accuracy still matters. That doesn't mean I have to be perfect about every tutorial I write. I can make a mistake on something like that, but I need to correct it if someone helps me correct it. And I need to take the steps to try to be as correct as possible and to do my due diligence to research something. And another place where accuracy really matters is when there's just no reason not to be factual. You don't want to spread uh, false rumors. You don't want to spread anything that could uh, harm a community. So when you post something and you're doing an industry website like this, you want to think, what's the effect on this? And am I looking for extra page views or am I looking for uh, continuing uh, gaining authority within this industry? And if you lose that accuracy, uh, it's really, really easy to become frustrating to the people that are reading and trusting your site. And just like a record, like this picture, that Harvesty, um, you get one scratch on that record and it bugs you every time it turns. Another little tip, uh, search engines matter. Um, a lot of people, uh, definitely in the WordPress space, like I said, they don't, but they do. Uh, there's a lot of low-hanging fruit. There's a lot of things that you can do that are relatively simple. And as Maddie said before me, one of those is just make your theme uh, search friendly, which basically means use best practices in those themes. Uh, download from the .org repository or purchase themes from uh, reputable people that will basically get out of the way uh, with SEO and let a plugin that excels at it do its job. Um, so you could use Yoast WordPress SEO or All-in-One SEO or whatever floats your boat to, to do little things with the search engines. And you've heard some of the tips uh, specifically today about what some of those things might be. Um, think about evergreen versus timely content. Uh, timely content has a shelf life. Uh, so when you write something like that, you need to uh, give it, have it uh, be accurate, and then you need to uh, let it go. And that is different than evergreen content. Evergreen content is something that you write and it sticks and it can last for six months or a year. That doesn't mean you have to hide your byline so it won't put the date on that content. Um, but sometimes it's good to schedule content that could last longer. And that can vary depending on the type of industry that you're in. Guessing which content will succeed is nearly impossible. I never understand why a post gets popular. Uh, I've written posts with the generic announcement that ends up getting uh, thousands of page views and 80 comments on it, and I just don't understand why. Uh, but it turns out there was some drama and some product and some forum, and everybody saw this new release, and they took all their frustrations out in my comment section. Uh, so I don't know which post that's going to happen on. Um, so don't necessarily just try to game what you're going to write to, uh, to meet those expectations of what you want. You have to ask if you want to receive something. Uh, I would, there are times where I'm frustrated that, why well, didn't this post that I spent so much time on get shared on a social network? Well, maybe I didn't ask anyone to share it. I have a newsletter list. I hardly ever send newsletters. I've sent a small handful. One of the ones I did, uh, someone gave me the great idea of, uh, hey, ask them. It was when I was redesigning my site. Uh, somebody said, ask your newsletter subscribers in the bottom of the newsletter to say, I see what 
post status, post status has uh, got going on and it's going to be awesome. So amazingly, at the bottom of this 1500 word newsletter, because I was too wordy, uh, there were 20 or 30 people that tweeted that. And the exact phrase, I didn't have to say anything. So sometimes you just have to ask in order to receive what you want uh, with your content and on your blog. On your blog, that could be calls to action. Create calls to action, even if you're not selling anything. It could just be that you want somebody to subscribe to your newsletter. It could be that you'd like them to um, go to some specific related post, whatever it is. Just create calls to action that meet the uh, desires that you have for a user to take. Something else I learned is that perception is key uh, in your website. As I mentioned that I started as a uh, link curation blog, but quickly turned into doing more original content. Um, unfortunately, nobody really knew I was doing original content because it looked like a link curation blog. So those posts where I was putting a lot of effort into them didn't necessarily do very much. So I redesigned the site, uh, and when I relaunched it, I put more of a focus on that original content and made a hubbub about doing this relaunch with the newsletter I was just mentioning, and all of a sudden, uh, my traffic more than doubled. And it was because people started to perceive the site in a different way. Don't be afraid to be a blog. Um, a lot of times people, they get halfway popular and then they're like, I need to turn this into a magazine theme. And they put 100 posts on the homepage. Um, don't be afraid to be a blog. Don't be afraid, if you're a one-person blog, to put your name on it. It doesn't have to be written by, you know, Committee for My Industry or whatever, some organization. It can be by you, and you can be the person that they're looking for, and your latest 10 posts might be all they want. So don't be afraid to be that. Monitor your growth. Uh, there are times I'm flabbergasted by what statistics do on a website. Uh, it may be a mystery to y'all, sometimes it's a mystery to me. Um, Sometimes unique visitors will be going up, but page views will be static. And what I'll do is I'll just not get frustrated by uh, what kind of statistics I have on the site, or if they're not as high as I want, or if it's not always up and to the right, like I think somebody mentioned before. And that's a chart that you always see. Um, instead, I try to analyze what is making these trends occur. Uh, and then I might make some subtle changes in the way I write and how I write uh, to account for that. So this is a lot of effort to be writing a blog about something that's not my full-time job. I haven't even mentioned how I monetize the site, uh, but the monetary benefits on the site for me are indirect. Uh, the value that I gain from this website could be uh, that you have an opportunity to mentor someone or that you have an opportunity to be mentored by someone. I have that very opportunity here. Chris Lim was um, here from the United States with me, and through the blogging that I've done, I've had an opportunity to create that relationship and be mentored by someone with much more experience than me. That's an extremely valuable but indirect benefit of my industry blog. Um, the biggest benefit that I personally see was that it equipped me to uh, get a career. I literally got uh, not only my initial job, but then I had at work camps these subtle hints of, hey, uh, whenever you're ready, <laughs> shoot me an email. Give me, when are you gonna, when are you gonna come join us? Stuff like that. And I had no right for this type of stuff. I simply was visible. I simply was trying to be a part of the community that I was in. And eventually I uh, responded to one of those and I was able to uh, change my job to an opportunity that I can't imagine that I would have had without that position. And never forget where you started. Uh, like I said, there's, there's always somebody that uh, you can teach. There's always somebody um, that wants to know how you got there. So try to teach them and also give thanks to those who have gotten you where you are today. In the end, uh, creating a blog like this, or uh, an industry blog is kind of the way I'm trying to refine it, because you may create one for design, 
You might create one for uh, UX. You might create one for your field, if it's uh, gardening or something else. But as you create uh, greater authority through what you're writing within that industry, it opens up greater opportunities that you may have never imagined. And I know that's certainly been the case for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. Uh, I'm sure you guys will have some questions for Brian. Uh, he seems to be a fountain of WordPress knowledge. Uh, Matthew? Cool. Um, so for designers and developers, there's very clear pathways for getting inspiration for what they do. You know, there's very well-known designers and well-known devs out there. But who's your inspiration as a blogger or like as a writer? So as a writer, who's my inspiration? Particularly in, well, in the WordPress and outside of the WordPress space. Uh, I subscribe to everything uh, via RSS, and I try to capture people that are creating really great company blogs, really great personal personal blogs, and I try to learn from them. There are people that may be able to create content that's just so enticing that I try to learn from, or maybe somebody just teaches something in a post that I never thought about. Uh, and I try to just see what others are doing around me, people that I admire, uh, and I try to see how maybe I can have an effect on others with my writing. That's very cool, thank you, Matty. Uh, anyone else? No? Last chance? Oh, all right, yes, <laughs> Jeffrey. Yeah. So, you talked about your, your writing career and your development career. What's sort of next, with you, uh, next for you with development? Are you going to get more involved with core or more involved with products, client work? What's, where is your particular passion? Uh, my passion is in building websites and creating solutions, uh, whether that's client work or product work. I currently work with a company called Range. I should have said that earlier. Uh, and we're a small team of four people that get to do really, really exciting things. Uh, and I have an extreme passion in creating those solutions for clients. Uh, and through the blog, I try to share some of what I'm learning when I'm, um, when I'm doing that client work with my readers because I imagine they're struggling with some of the same things that I would be struggling with. Awesome, thank you. Chuck, sure. yes, you sir, over there in the middle. Repeat the question. I, th I think you say, would you mind repeating the question that we had or asking a part? Fair enough, thank sure. you. Do you have a question yourself, by the way? Fair enough. <laughs> the previous question was basically where I find my personal inspiration, where I want to kind of go down a, a particular path within my career. Cool. Anyone else? Great. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you. Yeah. Guys, please don't forget to, you can follow Brian on Twitter. His handle is at Christguard, which is a surname over there, spelled on the screen for you. And post status as well as his websites. Uh, please go and check that out.